What's good, you YouTube? It's pretty much good back in another video. Today, let's talk about how to beat the Bistil Runic deck. Yes, this is a deck that just won YCS Bologna. Joshua Smith took the entire event home with his unique deck, and it's actually been kind of on the low-key radar. I know it won a regional a couple of weeks back. People were kind of playtesting, experimenting with it, but now that it's finally won a YCS and by a pro player nonetheless, I'm sure a lot of people will be picking it up. So it's officially a part of the meta game. So why not talk about how to beat this deck because it's very, very tricky. Now the deck plays a lot like the previously well-known Naturia Runic deck, only now instead of using Camellia, we're using cards like Quem. You know, previously Camellia allowed you to search for a copy of Nishiri Blessing, which is essentially two bodies, two level four tuner bodies rolled into one card. And now we have Quem, the Virtuous, who actually dumps a copy of Cartesia, and then you can activate a copy of your Runic spell to summon out something like a Hugin. And then when Hugin hits the table, what happens is you trigger the other effect of Quem, who allows you to resurrect that same Cartesia that you dumped. So now you have two level four tuner bodies. So that's just really nice for you to link climb, start going off into things like the Coral Dragon, or uh, in the case of the Triage Master, if you have any other tuner. And then from there, you can just go into your heavy, powerful synchros like Baron de Fleur. So a lot like, you know, how Nature you played previously, you're gonna set up a fountain with like a Baron or something, have a bunch of Bistios in your hand, and then kind of control the game from there. And best of all, with the Bistios, you get to play one of the best recursion cards in the entire game, which is none other than the powerful Branded Regain, which allows you to draw a card every time a dark or a light monster is banished. And then you also get to resurrect Magnemut over and over and over as long as your opponent keeps committing to the board, which means that you just have insane follow-up, insane attrition. And then on top of all the runic stuff, you pick away your opponent's board until you just win with a Widow Down game state. So without further ado, let's talk about how to beat this with Hand Trap. At the top of the list, we have Ash Blossom Joy Spring. What the heck should you Ash Blossom against this deck? Because they have a lot of cards that either draw or search or send directly from the deck. Well, there are a lot of culprits. One is actually Hugin, which allows them to discard a card to search for the Runic Fountain. Now, the Runic Fountain is one of the key resources that they actually use in this deck to, number one, disrupt you during your turn, as well as draw and replenish their hand, right? So stopping Hugin from resolving is really important, I think, so they don't actually have access to the Fountain. Now, another card that you can actually consider hitting also is Abyssal Lubellion. We kind of saw a pack use Ash against Lubellion in his future match against Josh in the Swiss rounds. This is also something that you can definitely hit because they're always going to go for Magnemut. And when they have Magnemut plus Lubellion in the grave, it means they're going to have an end phase search plus branded regain established plus the Lubellion body on the field. So that's just so many resources. Chances are they're probably going to get the regain draw on the same turn. And then on your turn, they're going to get another draw plus the snowball bring back Magnemut over and over. So this is another culprit that you can definitely hit. Honestly, you should just ash anything that's high impact. You know, anything that's allowing them to get two or more cards is definitely something you can ash. So if they start off with Hugin, this is something that you can ash but if you already have like an out to the fountain let's say we have something like a cosmic cyclone then we could consider just allowing that to resolve and then just using it for something more high impact that we can't deal with is necessarily easily with our hand like Mr. Lubellion, right so just waiting for the follow-up but personally i still love to ash just the hugin just to prevent them from getting fountain Worst case scenario, you could also potentially Ash a Runic Fountain, preventing them from drawing two or three cards. This can also be done during your turn when you draw Ash as your sixth card. So just key things to note there. But again, I think Lubellion and Hugin are the two big culprits in this deck that allow them to snowball infinite advantage. So that's sort of the cards that you want to deal with. Next is Drone Lockbird. This is actually a decent card against this deck because this deck does so much searching and then at the end of their plays, they kind of use the Fountain to replenish by drawing two or three cards. So drawing them will actually prevent that from happening. Now, one thing to note is that the quick play spell cards of the Runics are able to be activated during the draw step. So that means you're not gonna be able to use the Drone Lockbird when they go into Hugin during the draw phase and then discard to search the Fountain. But that's still okay because during the main phase, they're gonna be doing a lot of searching. They will have cards like Lubellion that's still gonna add. And then at the end of all of that, it's gonna prevent them from using the Fountain to draw multiple cards. Now, it's not the best auto win card by any means, unfortunately because they're still going to be able to play and drill kind of hand rips us by one card. But preventing them from drawing two or three cards can actually slow them down quite a bit. And on top of all that, sometimes it can be kind of effective against Magnemut because although Magnemut can still search from the graveyard, it makes it so they're only going to be able to add back a card from the graveyard and not be able to add another bestial name. For example, something like a Baldrake or a Drusworm, which might actually pose a threat during our turn, right? So kind of like has that extra added layer of advantage on top of everything that already does. So I actually quite like Drone Lockbird against decks like this. Next is, well, none other than the Bistios. If you can't beat them, literally join them, right? Like the Bistios are just such good cards that counter themselves. 
The Mystios are of course level 6 bodies that the player will sometimes use to summon during their own turn in order to use that big meaty body in tandem with one of their level 4 tuners and then go directly into something like a Baron de Fleur, right? So that means they're going to be activating the Bistios during their turn and then we can actually trigger our own Bistios in a chain, banishing the target, meaning that their Bistio will still stay in our hand, our Bistio hits the board, so that'll stuff something like a Bistio Magnema and keep that in their hand, delaying that one turn, which can be a huge thing in terms of tempo plus on top of all of that we actually get a body on the board whether that's true swarm or magnemut and then that just pushed a lot of pressure especially being able to link climb into things like sp little knight during our turn get the effect to send something and then you know we're already kind of ahead pushing them preventing them from being a turn further than us and also having the body during their turn so we're playing before our turn even starts right so uh, i think the mysterios have a lot of crossover against things like tier limits as well or other random light and dark decks that are in the format always been a huge fan of magnemut in general so i think it's definitely a package that you guys should consider citing. Druid Swarm is decent against decks like Unchained as well on its own, being able to send stuff. So yeah, guys, just put these in your deck. Trucking along, we have none other than the one and only hated D-Shifter. Yep, if your deck can actually play this card, it's definitely insane against this deck because they use their graveyard so much. Number one, the runic stuff will never hit the graveyard, meaning they're not going to be getting draws off a of fountain. Number two, none of their other cards will get any value like Quem. And of course, number three, the Bistios will not have nothing to actually banish besides, of course, your own D-Shifter. So they're still going to be able to get a body on board. But things like Lubellion are not going to be able to be activated because this does have to send to the graveyard as a cost. And also that means they're not going to be set up the branded regain which is one of the main reasons why this deck is so good it has so much attrition so guys shifter is a no-brainer next is ghost bell and haunted mansion this card is actually decent against this deck because it has certain interactions you can stop things like the quem from reviving something from the graveyard you can stop of course the runic fountain as well from shuffling back three cards and then drawing three from their deck and of course, there are certain other interactions that you can actually hurt in this deck. You know, things like the regain, if you're really desperate in a grind game where you just absolutely cannot afford them to get back a Bistio Magnemut upon your summon, you can use it in response to Branded Regain. There are just, it's not the best card against the deck by any means, but it's just something that the, the fact that there are a lot of crossovers in the metagame, you can hit other decks like Labyrinth, of course, you know, using it against things like Big Welcome Labyrinth, it's just so huge. And Labyrinth happen to be one of the more popular decks in this actual event. So I think the fact that this actually happens some interaction against certain decks makes it so it's definitely something we can consider siding it just has a lot of applications as a little card Next is Nibiru the Primal Being. This card is not that great against the Runic deck because they typically use their five summons on ending something like a Baron de Fleur, so you actually have difficulty interacting with it, you know, Bast in the Gate. They might also make something like an SP Little Knight so they can just banish their resources so they don't really get hurt by Nib. So I don't really recommend siding in Nib against this deck, but if it's in your main deck, you can sometimes still get value by pairing it with another hand trap. Like if you have something like an Effect Valor with a Nib, yeah, you can, you know, just Nib them, use Valor in response to the Baron, so you can get some value out of there but on, a, on its own as a card i just don't think it's effective against this deck at all so personally i don't recommend actually bringing it in i'd rather bring in cards that actually deal with the critical cards that we kind of talked about so far in the deck if you're already playing dd crow in your deck this is a potential card that you could bring in but it's just not that great yes there are things that you can actually hit with crow but they're few and far in between and they're very very low impact for example you could potentially hit the Cartesia in response to a Quem trigger effect trying to target and resurrect the Cartesia there. You could potentially hit something like a Magnum that's in their graveyard that they're trying to bring back off of the branded regain. And of course the best thing that you could probably hit is the Bistio Lubellion so they are not actually able to bring it back during their turn and then establish the branded regain directly. But it's very, very kind of like a neg. You're taking a huge neg to potentially prevent them from playing a certain way. If they already have another copy of Lubellion or a way to dump it to the graveyard with something like a Saroner, then you're potentially just losing out on that Crow interaction all completely. So in my opinion, it's just not that great of a card. I don't recommend siding it in for the sheer fact that this deck just isn't like graveyard based to the degree where a crow would hit it but you know if it's in your main deck now you know how you can play around it ghost ogre and snow rabbit this is a card that doesn't do a lot against the deck either obviously one of the biggest things that you could hit is runic fountain as well as the regain which are both continuous spell cards that remain face up on the field to resolve however hugin for those guys that don't remember has the effect where you can actually banish it instead 
to protect one of your cards from being destroyed by a card effect. And thanks to the fact that the runic spell cards are all quick plays, they can just chain it directly to something like a ghost ogre, thereby preventing those cards from being destroyed, which is why I don't think ghost ogre is very good against this deck. But if you're already signing it and you have absolutely nothing better to bring in, you could just chance it and hope that they already have a monster in the extra deck column, meaning that they're not gonna be able to chain to summon out the Hugin to protect something. That's just, you know, something to think about. Next, Effect Veiler, Infinite Impermanence, and Ghost Mourner. These cards are all very, very powerful cards. Now, obviously, the first thing that comes to mind is hitting Hugin a lot like how you would on Ash. However, it seems like some players, especially Joshua Smith, seem to be testing out this card called Duality, which is a quick play spell card that says you can tribute a light or dark monster, special summon one light or dark monster from your hand or extra deck with the same original type and level, but with a different attribute, meaning they can actually tribute the Hugin to summon something like an all vein, the essence of vanity, which happens to be a dark fairy monster that coincides with the light fairy of Hugin. So that means they're going to dodge your targeting effect completely and still be able to resolve the effect as well as getting a free Alvain out on the table, which is a level two tuner. So that's just one thing to note. Obviously, I personally, if my hand is bad where I can't deal with the fountain or the like the full combo, I'm still going to go for it. I'm still going to use my Abelior or the Imperm, probably Imperm or Mourner if they're using it in draw phase to summon that Hugin, to target that Hugin and potentially stop it. You know, I'll take the chance. If you have duality, whatever. That's just, you know, it sucks for me. I couldn't play around it anyways. But if I held my Imperm, then I might have just gotten punished anyways there. So it wouldn't have mattered, right? But you could also, of course, hit the Vistu Lubellion just to prevent them from establishing that onboard branded regained. One thing to prevent the duality, to play around duality rather, is to actually use the Imperm or Valor directly on the successful summon of the Bistu Lubellion because they can only summon Bistu Lubellion once per turn that way. It means that they're probably not going to be able to get another one on board anyways. So we can just play around the duality completely by just using the Imperm or the Valor on the summon of Bistu Lubellion, preventing them from getting the Regained out. And then that means that Regained, you know, will not be able to have them recur insane amount of resources. So again, the key things to note are are probably using it on Hugin to chance that they don't have duality, which is like two or three copies of. And of course, the Bistil Lubellion on the successful summon before they actually activate the effect. Bistil Lubellion, of course, in tandem with duality, can go directly into something like a Scarlet Dragon Archfiend, which allows them to burn for a lot of damage. And it's just a generally annoying card. It's a board wipe or a burn in time for a huge amount of damage. So just beware of duality as a whole. Or better yet, if you're feeling a little bit more daring, you can actually hold something like an Imperm just so you can hit their end board. So hitting it on something like an SP Little Knight during your turn or Baron de Fleur just to bait out that negate is something that you can consider as well, depending on your hand. But I generally wouldn't recommend waiting that long because by then the resources have snowballed so much that it's probably going to backfire for you. So I'd rather hit the cards before they start playing. Adding Quem is another target you can definitely consider maybe Veiling or Imperming just for the sheer fact that they don't get the Cartesia access in rotation, get the body onto the field. Now, the thing with Quem, however, is if they're going normal summon, this is their first action, it might mean that they don't actually have access to Hugin because they would have used the Hugin effect in the draw phase to play around Drolock Bird. So that's just one thing to consider. Maybe their hand is already mediocre. If you Veiler this, it doesn't really do much because they weren't able to get the Cartesia out from the grave anyways. So they were just like baiting a free Veiler, right? Like the Quem was still going to be used for with another Bistil just to go off into uh, something like a level 10 Synchro. But that being said, preventing them from dumping the Cartesia might also prevent them from getting a light into the graveyard for them to banish with the Bistil. So just one thing to note, depending on your hand, right? Generally, I would rather hold the actual Veiler or the Imperm for something higher impact like a Hugin or like the actual Lubellin itself but if you guys feel like your hand is strong enough where you can actually chance that they don't have a lot of powerful follow-up or you can deal with it then you can consider definitely Valering and Quem as well. And then as a side really we should talk about duality really quickly because this is a new addition to the deck that was innovated this weekend. And we kind of already talked about Hugin going into the All Vein, the Essence of Vanity, which is a level two tuner fusion, as well as Lubelion being able to go into Scarlet Dragon Archfiend just to burn for time or to wipe boards. But there was also a really, really interesting inclusion that he had, which paired really well with one of the runic fusions, AKA Gary, the runic fangs, which is a dark beast monster that could actually be used in tandem with duality to tribute and summon out the fabled unicorn, which is a light beast monster. Now, for those of you guys that have never seen this Card. Back in the day, we used to play this on our Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS games, but the Fabled Unicorn is a level four synchro that says, while you and your opponent have the same number of cards in your hand, negate all cards and effects activated by your opponent, and if you do, destroy those cards. Now, one thing to note is that this is actually a continuous effect, so it doesn't actually activate. So theoretically, what Josh was doing this weekend was summoning out the Gary and then 
you know, setting a duality to their back row. And then he might have like four cards or X amount of cards in his hand. So what you can actually do is chain the effect of duality to tribute to summon out Fabled Unicorn when your opponent activates a Spiral Trap effect. Then you can proceed by chaining Bestials or whatever cards that you have in your hand to control your hand size. So if you have runic cards, you know, you play them. Let's say your opponent has four cards in their hand. You can chain a Bestial while well, you have five in hand. And then on resolution, because you have four cards in hand, Unicorn will still negate that card. It does not check on the activation how many cards are in each player's hand, but rather it's well on the resolution because it says negate all cards and effects activated by your opponent. And it's a continuous effect. So this is just really, really crucial to know that it doesn't activate. So as long as on the resolution of a card, you have equal amount of cards in both players' hands, then that effect will be negated for any spells and traps. So really, really crazy that he actually discovered this on his own. I think it's a really, really interesting thing. But one thing to note, if they do pass on the Gary with like a set back roll, you kind of know you might want to kind of hold your Imperm potentially for the Unicorn. So that's just one thing to note extra on top of everything. Next, let's talk about board breakers. Starting with the top, with my favorite board breaker against this deck, none other than Cosmic Cyclone. This card is highly effective in the metagame, going first and second against a lot of decks. Going second against Tier Laments, you can hit Suliac, you can hit Field Spell. Going first against Purely, my friend Purely, the Field Spell. Going first against Unchained as well. This card is effective against Runix, especially because you get to trade away for Fountain, right? Going first, you can kind of snipe a Fountain. Going second, you can snipe a Fountain as well, because they do require Fountain to be on the field in order to activate the Quick Play Spell cards directly from their hand. Now, another key card that you have to hit is Branded Regain. This is sort of like the value engine that they get. They're able to recycle the Magnema. They're able to shuffle back cards and draw cards, as well as being able to recycle back their extra deck monsters by banishing it off of Bistio and then triggering Regain. So make sure that you guys have Cosmic Cyclone in your side deck specifically for these cards. I would say Runic Fountain is obviously priority because this is how they interact with you and also draw up the three cards. And then the secondary is not another than Branded Regain because if you let this card snowball past two or three turns, you're probably losing the game. They just get so much advantage it makes it so bestials are essentially gadgets so i would say cosmic cyclone is definitely a staple after this current weekend after watch his bologna i definitely want to put this back in my deck over something like a lightning storm speaking of which lightning storm just not very good against this deck you know we already talked about hugan being able to protect their cards by banishing itself so in my opinion it's just not a great card you can maybe bait out a baron to fleur negate if they happen to, to be judicious and put the baron to fleur in attack mode but better players are probably just sticking in defense mode anyway so lightning storm is not going to get any value so in my opinion it's not very good same thing with evenly matched even if you are able to bait out the baron to fleur still they're just going to leave the runic fountain on the table and they have a bunch of bestials in their hand you know it kind of gets rid of potentially the uh, branded regain and all the other crap on the field, but I don't think it's good enough. You're trading your battle plays potentially to be negated by Baron de Fleur or to still have to deal with the Runic Fountain after all the fact, right? After the smoke clears. So in my opinion, even the match in Lightning Storm is just not very good. It's better to have quick play chainables like Cosmic Cyclone. Super Polymerization doesn't really do a whole lot against this deck. Like maybe you'll catch them in the odd time having an SP Little Knight plus a Baron de Fleur on the table so you can just go into the Guilty Gear Freed like players were doing in the last couple of events. But the chances are they're not going to be able to do that. And if they're a good player and they know you're playing Super Poly in the main deck, they're definitely not going to go for that line. Super Poly effectively does nothing against this deck. I wouldn't side it in at all. Droplets is not very good against this deck, but if you're playing a deck that has a lot of stuff to like kind of send off, you know, you're playing a bunch of spells where Droplet becomes free, so to speak, you could get some value out of it, just negating things like SP Little Knight or Baron de Fleur. It's always like a little bit of, uh, you get some intrinsic value. It's not the best card, it's not the worst. Sometimes you can hit a Hugin, you know, on the grind game or going first. But personally, I wouldn't side it in particularly for this deck because, again, we want to get rid of the continuous spell cards. Those are the annoying cards that we really care about or like the Bistials in the hand. We don't really care about their board. This is a control deck that has interactions coming at you from all angles, right? So, yeah, just key, note, key thing to note there. And then Triple Tactics Talent as well as Triple Tactics Thrust. These cards are eh, meh against this deck. Obviously, there are monsters. We already talked about Espy Little Knight and Baron de Fleur. You know, if you have Tactics Talent after the uh, negate activates, then sure, it's, there's some value there. But if they're good, they're going to avoid using the effects to the extent of their uh, ability, right? Like we saw in the feature match, Joshua Schmidt had the Branded Regained up against Pack. He didn't use the effect of Branded Regained on the summon uh, Pack because. He said, hey, if I bring back Magnemut, that's just going to play into Talents. So 
He literally held the branded regain until the last possible moment where Baron de Fleur had to deploy that negate. And that only then was Tactics Talent live, right? So like a good player is not going to waste their bestials or waste their monster effects immediately. They're going to use their runic spell cards instead to disrupt you. And then that way they're sort of playing around the talents to the last possible second, right? Where it just loses value. Because if you're starting off with your plays and you're playing into the runic cards and, you know, you're getting hit by like runic freezing chains and getting hit by the... Um, flashing fires, your opponent's drawing a bunch of cards, the Tactics Talent just loses value more and more as time progresses after each consecutive card is activated. So in my opinion, they're not great against this deck, but they aren't always dead, right? And if you're already main decking Triple Tactics Talent and you have nothing to take it out for, then sure, keep it in going second. But uh, it's just like, it's not a great card because of the existence of the Runics and how they play, is they're always going to use the Runic spell cards ahead of time before using their monster effects, so you're kind of like out of luck in that uh, regard. So yeah, that's about all I had for this video. What do you guys think about these cards? What do you guys think about this deck? And are there any cards we missed that could actually be highly effective against this deck? I'm out of completely great fast. So let us know in the comments below if you guys haven't already subscribed to support the channel. And we'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.